Hey everyone, praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning into this video. I hope and pray that this video is such a blessing unto you. Today I want to talk to you guys about compartmentalizing sin. Hmm, that's deep, right? Yeah. Okay, anyway, so when we talk about compartmentalizing sin, it's simply those things that, you know, we cover up that we do behind closed doors that we as Christian believers would not do in front of those who deem us to be saved. <laughs> it happens, y'all. And I'm just going to keep it real with y'all because too many of us is out here faking. Too many of us is out here um, abusing the fact that we are Christians. We're living a life for of sin we're doing so many things behind closed doors and the first thing we say is I'm in the comfort of my own home can't nobody tell me what to do in my house but you call yourself a Christian and a believer of the most high God Many of us, we get caught up in the world of sin, sinful desires. You know, many of us say, hey, oh, you know, we were born into sin. Yes, we were born into sin. Although we were born into sin does not mean that we have to commit sin after sin after sin. A lot of people, I hear a lot of people say, well, Jesus will forgive me of my sins. All I got to do is go to the altar and uh, ask for God to forgive me and uh, lay it at the altar and ask for forgiveness and repent. Okay. However, what most people fail to realize is that repent means to turn and walk away from. Some of us is not humble enough to understand that when we repent, we turn and walk away from it, meaning that we're not going to do it again. Too many of us are compartmentalizing sin. We're one way behind closed doors. And then when we get into the world, we are another way. We live a life that is full of disaster. We're living a life that is full of nothing but lies. We're living in a dark room or dark closet of sin. And so when we compartmentalize sins, we basically, with those people, those Christian folk, you know, that, uh, and I'm, I, I'm just saying, I, I got to keep it real with y'all. We are those people who portray to be something that we are not in front of Christian folk, Christian believers, saints of God, so to speak, um, the church. We pretend to be something around. And see, what's so sad is that a lot of us know how to play church so well because we've been in church for so long. We know how to act um, Christian-like. We know how to dress Christian-like. We know how to speak Christian-like. We know how to look like we saints of God. But then when we are with those people or around the people who are living in the world, we conduct ourselves and with a uh, worldly conduct. We as a believer of Christ are called to live a life that is without sin. Oh, yes, we were born into sin. Don't get me wrong. But just because we were born into sin does not mean that we have to sin willingly. It's one thing to sin willingly and it's another thing to sin unwillingly, knowingly and unknowingly. So we have to be careful of uh, those who call us Christians, who call ourselves children of the most high God. We have to be careful to not um, compartmentalize our sins. And so what am I saying? I'm looking down. You guys are going to see me looking down because I got some notes that I wrote down, that I want you guys, or that I have, that I want you guys to understand what I mean by compartmentalizing sin. Many of us, we, um, you know, appear to be Christian folk. We appear to be sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit. We appear to be uh, followers of Jesus Christ. But then when we go out into the world, 
uh, I mean, when we go into our dark room or a dark closet of sin, we're actually somebody else. Well, I, I, I mean, it's like we live a world of duplicity. And when I say that we live a world of duplicity, that means that we are, um, everything that we do is contra contradictive. You know, we are contra contradictive in our thinking. We're contradictive in our speech, you know, meaning that we are showing ourselves to be one way, but in reality, we're actually being another way. And so we become contradictive in our actions and, you know, we have to question folk like that. We have to be careful, those who call ourselves believers, to conduct ourselves in a manner that is not double-minded. Because the word of God says that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So if you're thinking one way, you know, but then you're thinking another way, you're double-minded. You're acting one way, you're acting another way, um behind closed doors, you're acting, uh, uh, let me go back, you're acting one way outside in the world, but then when you go behind closed doors, you're acting another way, you're unstable, you're double-minded, and so God wants to deliver, Jesus want to deliver you all from that double-minded and unstable ways of yours. You know, too many of us, we go out and we commit, you know, horrific sins. We become um, uh, immortal, you know, sexual immorality begins to take place, drug use. You know, we have these addictions, um, fornication. We have adultery. We want to um, commit sins after sins after sins and feel that we are not going to be held accountable for those sins. But I'm here to tell you as a disciple of Jesus Christ that it is time for us to get it together. We as a Christian have to be able to turn and walk away from our evil ways. Simple as that. We have to learn to walk in the spirit of humility. We have to be humble. We cannot go off of what our emotions, because we have to understand that when we act out of our emotions, it causes us to do things that we don't want to do. The Bible says that we are not to sin upon our wrath, meaning that because we're angry, it does not give us the power or the authority to go and sin. We are to bring those sins under subjection. We are to pray. We are to humble ourselves. We are to seek the face of God and allow him to guide us. But too often, many of us, we want to go back and we want to live in a dark room of drug abuse. We want to live in a dark room filled with pornography. We want to live in a dark room of sin filled with cyber sex and relationships that is ungodly. We, we are uh, spiritually tied to ungodly souls. We want to live a life of fornication, adultery. I mentioned some of these. You know, we want to live a life that is full of gossip and talking dirty jokes and telling dirty jokes. And we want to do magic. We want to um, tell lies on people and about people. We want to talk dirty about them. You know, these are some of those sins that we do. But then when we get into, when we get around Christian folk, other believers, we want to put on a facade as if we are just so perfect. But I'm here to tell you, it's all a lie. Be who you're going to be outside in the world, just who you're going to be behind closed doors. You know, too many of us get caught up in trying to impress other people. We want to live a life that is pleasing to other people. And we forget to try to live a life that is pleasing to the Father. We forget to try to live a life that is pleasing to Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. So we get caught up in the spirit of wickedness. 